Esha Sarveshu Bhuteshu Gudhotma Naprakashate Drishyate Itvagriya Buddhya Sukshmaya Sukshma Darshi Bihi He is hidden in all beings, and hence he does not appear as the self of all. But by the seers of subtle things, he is seen through a pointed and fine intellect. E Shaha, this one, this Purusha, Sarveshu Bhuteshu, in all creatures from Brahma to a clump of grass, Gudaha is hidden, though he has such activities as hearing, seeing, etc., yet he is covered by avidya, that is, maya. Thus, since he is the atma, the self of all, na prakashate, he does not appear as the self of anyone. Alas, how unfathomable, inscrutable, and variegated is this maya, that every creature, though in reality identical with the supreme entity, and is instructed as such, does not grasp the fact, I am the Supreme Self, while even without being told, he accepts as his self the non-selves, that is, the aggregate of body and senses, under the idea, I am the son of such a one, though these latter are objects of perception, and are hence not his self, like pots, etc., Verily, it is through the maya of the Supreme Being that every man moves again and again through birth and death. There is smriti on this point. I am not revealed to all, being veiled by my yoga maya, that is, the illusion born of the Congress of the Gunas. Bhagavad Gita 7.25 Yachet van manasi pragyas tad yachet jana atmani Jnanam atmani mahati ni yachet tad yachet janta atmani The discriminating man should merge the organ of speech into the mind. He should merge that mind into the intelligent self. He should merge the intelligent self into the great soul. He should merge the great soul into the peaceful self. The means for his attainment is being stated. Pragnaha, the discriminating man, Yatched, should merge. What should he merge? Vak, that is Vacham, the organ of speech which represents all the organs, vak being used suggestively for all of them. Where? Manasi, into the mind. The use of the word with long I is a Vedic license. Tut, that mind, again, yatche, he should merge, jnane atmani, into the intellect, bright by nature, which is their self, as the intellect pervades the organs, beginning with the mind, it is their self, their innermost principle. Jnanam, the intellect. Nyatchet, he should dissolve. Mahati Atmani, in the great soul, the firstborn, Hiranyagarbha. The idea is that he should make the intelligence as clear in its nature as is the firstborn. And that great soul, again, Yatched, he should sink, Shante, into the peaceful, whose nature does not admit of any distinction, which is unchangeable. Into that peaceful Atmani, self, into the real self, which is within all, and is the witness of all the modifications of the intellect. Just as the water in a mirage the snake on a rope, and dirt in the sky are eliminated through the perception of the real nature of the mirage, rope, and sky. Similarly, by dissolving in Purusha, the self, through the knowledge of the true nature of one's own self, all that is projected by unreal ignorance 
that is characterized by action, instrument, and result, and that is but constituted by the three, name, form, and action. One becomes established in the self and peaceful in mind, and he has his goal achieved. Namaste. So, in these two verses is dealt with the question of why do we not see God? You know, atheists will make this point uh, as a, a doubt against the existence of God. Well, you can go anywhere, uh, you can go in a temple or a church or a monastery, and you don't see God. Where is God? Show me God, they challenge. Well, to see God is not an easy thing. One must have a very well-developed intelligence. That is the point of this verse 12, that he is seen through the intellect. God is seen by knowledge. So first of all, you have to have a determination within yourself that I am going to see God. I'm going to understand God. I remember it happened to me. I was three and a half years old. And I was sitting in the church. My family was very involved with the church. And they were decorating for Easter, putting out all the Easter lilies and the garlands and this and that. You know, the very beautiful thing. Nice uh, seva to God. <laughs> but I was too young to really help. So I was just sitting there in the pew looking around the church. And they had these beautiful stained glass windows. And one of them, you know, is that classic picture of Jesus in the garden praying like this. And the light is coming down. The light of God is coming down and illuminating him. And I suddenly realized in my young little brain, <laughs> he's talking with God. The very next thought I had was, I am going to do that. Because I had heard in the church that Jesus said, whatever I have done, you will also do. And you will even do more. You know, and unlike sophisticated people who rationalize away their inability to attain any kind of spiritual experiences, I took it literally. Okay, if Jesus said it, then I'm going to do it. And so I set out to study the scriptures with that in mind. I mean, at that age, I was already reading the New York Times, so why not? I used to look up all the words in the dictionary, get the meaning, precise meaning of each word. And later on, I went back to the Greek New Testament and looked up every word and got the real meaning. And it's quite different from any of the public translations Maybe the monks in some monastery have the actual translations, but we sure don't. But anyway, all that led to where we are today. Going back to the original sources and determining the meaning for ourselves. And here he says that God, the Supreme, the Purusha, the Self, Brahman, is hidden in all things. Now, in 1984, I had this vision by the grace of Shakti. She came and gave me Shakti Pat, opened up my third eye, and I could see Brahman hidden in all things, literally. And it was such a revelation. It was such bliss. Huh? Because it means that God is everywhere. God is in everything. Everything has consciousness. Everything has intelligence. You can talk to God. You don't have to go to any special place like a temple or, you know, it, it helps to be in a place that's quiet, where you're undisturbed, where you can concentrate your mind on God. Because Shankara describes in his purports or his commentary on Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, he says, the senses are stronger than knowledge. You may have knowledge of a certain spiritual fact. 
You may even have realization of it. But the senses are so strong that they mislead the mind of even a man of knowledge. This is stated in Bhagavad Gita. The senses are so strong, Arjuna says, trying to control them is like trying to control the wind. <laughs> you can't control the wind. Similarly, you can't control the mind and senses. They're going to do their thing because they are driven by a force that is stronger than we are. Nature. Maya. Huh? So, when the senses move, we can get overwhelmed very easily. So it's good to be in a quiet place. The Buddha used to exhort his students when they had understood his teaching. Go alone to an isolated place, like the roots of a tree, the bank of a river, a forest, a mountain, even a field or an abandoned building, somewhere where you won't be disturbed. Nobody goes there. Huh? Go to this quiet place and do what has to be done. And what has to be done, we explained in the last video, the meditations that will bring you to the ultimate realization. But there is a doubt expressed in this tika, is it not contradictory to say, having realized it, the intelligent man does not grieve? That's back in Katopanishad 214. Um, and then, he does not appear. Huh? Having realized it, the intelligent man does not grieve. But this verse says he does not appear. He's not visible. And the answer is, this is not so. Since he is not known to a man whose intellect has not been purified, it is said he does not appear. But drushite, he is seen through the purified intellect, agriyaya, through the pointed intellect. That intellect which is like a point, agra, is agriya. Through that, that is being associated with concentration, Sukshmaya, through the subtle intellect that is engaged in ascertaining subtle things. By whom? Sukshma Darshibihi, by the seers of subtle things. These seers are those who have become skilled in penetrating into the subtlest thing through their perception of an ascending order of subtleness by following the process as indicated in the text. The sense objects are higher than the senses, etc., back in verse 10. So, this is the means of attainment. You begin with the senses. The eye, ear, nose, tongue, etc. And then you penetrate back to the sense objects, which are light, sound, smell, taste, touch, and thought. And you follow them back to their origin, which is ultimately the Purusha, ultimately Brahman, the source of everything, ultimately consciousness. Consciousness is basic to everything. Without consciousness, there is nothing, no experience at all. So, consciousness is fundamental to everything else. Without consciousness, there is nothing else. <laughs> we have to realize consciousness through its objects, trace it back to its source, and ultimately we find the subtlest of all subtle things, which can be perceived by the sharp intellect of those who know the subtle things. Therefore, one has to become expert in ontology, epistemology, um, phenomenology, and so many other things. That's why we talk about these things on this channel, and we have for the last 12 years. And if you go back to the very beginning, the very earliest videos on this channel, you'll see that even then, 
we're talking about these things, these subtle things. So you have to become expert to reach the actual source, to reach Brahman. We say reach, but what we really mean is realize, because we already are Brahman. We are Brahman. Ahang Pramasmi, Tattvamasi, uh, and simply by removing all these subtle coverings, then we come back to the real self. And that is the pinnacle of self-realization. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.